Hello, this is Michael. So, here is some context. I don't know why God had me experience this, and honestly, I'm telling you as a human, I'm pretty mad. I'm not going to blaspheme God, but I'm pretty mad. Because honestly, what I would rather do is have a white picket fence with a cute wife, two kids, and two cute little dogs. But no, I'm a mentally ill 30-year-old artist. And um, I'm using mentally ill because that makes you feel better about yourself. I will say this. Number one, I do love the art. The art is amazing. I love the impact it has on you all. Even throughout this, I have been consistently making art. We released two pieces yesterday. We released one piece this morning. So it's not just all meme shit, okay? That's the one time I'm going to curse in this video. I really do believe that. I'm trying to communicate this effectively. I'm just trying to state it openly, and you can make a decision for yourself. I'm not trying to change anyone's mind, okay? It's all right, but we're hitting the time. God bless you all. Looking at the, the biggest thing I like about it is how these two connect right here, um, how we connected um, the chin line of King Vaughn and the mouth of uh, Brian Griffin and then um, the color right here too. Um, I think it's a good vibe fit. Um, yeah, it, it did pretty well. It got about 1,400 likes on Instagram and it was uh, definitely a fan favorite during the month of January. Uh, so my name is, uh, my legal name is Michael Flynn. And uh, for a reason or two, I decided to change my name online to Flynn Patrick. When I started creating visuals, I was uh, mentoring uh, for individuals who um, have disabilities, specifically on the autism spectrum, which I hadn't, I, I didn't tell them I was myself, but I was doing it too. And there were art classes and um I started helping out with the classes, like physically with the physical pieces. Um, and it got some attention in the class, like, whoa, this is different. Like I got um, positive feedback. So um, I remember my first ever visual, October 15th, 2021, I drew Lamella Ball during art class at work and posted it. And then that one did okay. And then I think I my fourth ever was Cade Cunningham and I posted it on the Detroit Pistons subreddit and it got like 100,000 views on my fourth ever drawing ever. So I was like, well, maybe there's something here. <laughs> That's when I started. I took it pretty seriously. I was like, my fourth drawing ever has 100,000 views. I might want to, I was like, you know what? Let's go with this. And it worked. The, the, I do remember this was a tough night specifically, even though I was on the live. So the thing is like when we were doing, like you can see the color like right here and right here mm -hmm. i was drawing it live which was good but like a lot of the emotional transmutation comes within the color so like some people might just see it as oh it looks like a kindergarten drawing but if you think about the um esoteric philosophy in terms of the transmutation of the color that's really what um gets a lot of people connected to it this one specifically on a live um experiencing some anxiety um i went um pretty hard on the colors i definitely could have done a little bit better here but um again i uh, um the color these two colors like here specifically here and here you can see um a lot of the philosophy of the um, emotional transmutation i did i played varsity basketball in high school yeah uh yeah that was uh i played a uh, varsity basketball um junior year junior year of high school um i went to seven high school so high school is kind of a blur to me <laughs> Yeah, a lot of, uh, yeah, it, it definitely uh, shaped who I am for sure, yeah. But I, I went to college. I, I I still had a good GPA in high school, actually. I didn't party in high school. Um, so I went to college and got a degree. And um, yeah, then I moved up here after I uh, got my degree. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, and I moved to uh, Naples, Florida when I was eight years old. So I lived in Naples, Florida from eight to 21 with, I, I, for a short time when I was 16, I lived in Kansas city and I actually have some followers who 
I know from Kansas City. That's why I mentioned that. So I did make some friends in Kansas City. But um, most of the time from 8 to 21, um, I was in uh, Naples, Florida. And then from 18 to 21, um, I lived in Fort Myers and went to Florida Gulf Coast University. This was a request, I believe. My favorite part about this piece is this red line because that was an emotional um, transmutation where I was kind of feeling it and I just like kind of went on it. Um, mm -hmm. I like the details of this piece. I think the details of this piece um, are what stand out. I like how we did um, the skin color right here because um, Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, I, we were talking about this earlier. I actually, one of my um, art uh, influences is wrestling because of the uh, dramatic progression of how the art works. Um, I watched, I, I, old, when I was six years old, I actually went to a WCW event. Um, so, um, and Hollywood Hulk Hogan in the 90s was absolutely um, huge. And then in terms of um, anime going on today, Jotaro Kujo is definitely one of the more known characters. So you're um, putting different styles from different eras, um, clashing them. Um, this is an example of how if I make a mistake, I continue going because I believe I used a similar character um, on his neck, but I felt that the vibe, even though I used a different color um, utensil for the rest of his skin, for some reason I liked that. Mm -hmm. So I kept it. My number one art philosophy, I, I, if I make a mistake, I keep going. I don't start over pieces. That's how I've been able to get all these um, stacked up over time. If it's within the first couple minutes, maybe. Yeah. Sometimes I do if it's in the, but if it's like 10 minutes and I make a mistake, I just keep going it and turn it into something. I think on my top, Light Yaga, like maybe even Guts, on like at least two of the top three pieces on the page, I made a pretty significant mistake. Specifically with Light Yaga, yeah, I remember I messed up his eyes and you can see it on the piece, but I just kept going and turned it into something. I think that's, um, that art philosophy is kind of what people connect with too, I guess, because um, yeah. For some reason <laughs> there was one moment that um kind of was a um a note from the spirit guides i guess but um in 2017 i was in outpatient therapy for uh uh rehab drug rehab and um <clears throat> there um there was um it was like family day and we had like um an art project this was like six years ago no seven years ago now and um, uh, I'd never really drawn before like that, but I, I have it and I can show you after this, but I put it together and no, I, I had the same reaction. It was like I, the same style as this. Like it probably, even if I pulled it out, it's, it's kind of in the similar vein. It was the first piece I ever really put together and it was pretty abstract, but like someone next to me audibly, audibly was like, holy shit. Like, there was something there. Like the whole class was like basically crowding around. It was like, it's like, it, it's like a movie scene. Like literally everyone in the class, like crowded around me in this drug rehab class over my drawing. There was a sign about seven years ago that was kind of like, maybe you'll be doing this in the future. Yeah. It's some, yeah, I, I wouldn't have guessed this, <laughs> but it, I mean, yeah, it's cool. So I laid it down in the living room upstairs and I just, uh, I laid on the floor making it. And, um, it's uh what we're using for the promote that's been there but um yeah i actually kind of like that and adds a little touch to it um i really this was me 10 years ago then and this was me then um i had a little more facial hair a year ago but um we really focused on i really focused on the color there was this was pastel marker i believe um and the the themes of the emotional texture of this and um i remember one of my close friends who i was working with at the time like posted it on a store and he was like the emotional texture of this is just like unlike anything i've ever seen before so i like the color we use down here we really really focused on as you can see with what we, like i really focused on the filling of the color with this one uh <clears throat> you know i guess at this point i think i was almost 20 for the reference picture here and um uh being in college just uh not as uh, much stress. And then this is me uh, being an Instagram artist online 10 years later. There's good and bad and everything. Um, uh, I've got more hair on my face and less on my head now. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, I like, there's definitely, I like this, but I, that's kind of a representation of even though things looked okay on the outside, 
Um, I was very lost and I'm probably less lost now at 30 than I was at 19. Honestly, even though at 19, like I was like on the outside, like a leader in the college and like, um, very active in the community and, um, on my way to normal life. And, um, then that kind of blew up over the next 10 years. But, uh, uh, there's definitely some positives. I mean, we get people from around the world saying that, uh, they appreciate what I do and it happens daily now. So, um, yeah, it's been worth it. Um, I just got, um, I do love this piece though. This one, this is probably my one piece that's like absolutely not for sale right now. It grew pretty. F I mean, I got to three thousand followers in like three months of ever making art, which is not usual. Um, I'm not saying it's never happened, but it's from talking with other artists, that's definitely not usual. And the artist that got me started was um, Mark Rothko, and I highly believe in Mark Rothko's art philosophy. I would even maybe go as far to say he's probably my only art influence, which is an interesting factor with this. Um, um, I'm not saying I don't study art. I do. Um, but his art philosophy compared to the other top painting painters ever sold in history was just, it's, it's so different. And I mean, he sold $200 million paintings that had three colors that he would just put all his emotion into. And it was so fascinating to me. I think the most important competition within any art realm is within yourself um, instead of um, anyone else. Every single one of these pieces I draw for myself. And I'm gonna tell you why, because I like the actual process of the drawing and it doesn't matter what I'm drawing. And if that drawing has an impact on you, then I'll draw it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like drawing. Um, I, I draw, I, I was telling you before this, um, I, I draw personal pieces too. Um, but every, I can honestly say that. And that's a question I've gotten a lot. Every single one of these pieces, every single one is a personal piece. And the reason for that is I like the process of doing it. No matter what subject I'm drawing, I love doing it. 2024 has been a little rough so far. Um, out of it has come probably my three most successful pieces in a month span that um, blew up the engagement of the page in a very short amount of time. But, and that was very hard to um, uh, adapt to. That, that was actually very difficult. Like I did not have the reaction I thought I would have when what I had been dreaming about my, uh, the crucifixion of guts, which um, I got like, uh, 400,000 views and 33,000 likes in less than 72 hours. Um, and it was all, you remember it was negative 20 here last month. So, um, the three days after that were the three days it was negative 20 as a, I'm pretty good with weather. Um, bipolar and negative 20 does not mix well together. So, um, <laughs> I was inside the whole time. I was miserable. Like it was so freaking cold. And on top of that, while it was negative 20, this piece is like exponentially growing on Instagram. And I got people talking about giving me $10,000 for it. So like, <laughs> while it's negative 20 outside. So my brain was not working. And it was during that when I, decided, I took the piece down for 12 hours. I decided to put it back up, but it freaked me out so much. I took the piece down and I decided to come out publicly with my mental illness a lot earlier than I'd planned because I'd kept it a secret. Uh, something just told me to do that. I don't know. That was just like gut feeling. There's plans to keep drawing long term and I've thought these plans through and I plan to stick with it for sure. I did uh, spend a week voluntar voluntarily um, myself in a mental health hospital from February 1st to February 8th. Um, I did keep working in there. <laughs> um, that, but. Uh, in terms of the mental health thing, I had been like taking active steps and um, there were some roadblocks. That's the best way to put it. Um, and that was part of the reason why I decided to go public because part of it was like I'm taking active steps and I'm running to like three canceled appointments and um, getting fired from my day job the third day after a canceled appointment due to... Um, uh, mental stress I had from trying to set up an appointment to get everything with that set up. This is part of the awareness. Like you see like bipolar schizophrenia, like, and the first thing, and I understand this because before I was diagnosed with these things, if I was 20 years old, I would think the same thing. So this is an out judgment. 
But the first thing you're going to think is you got fired from a job like that. It's like you freaked out or something or like you went yellow on somebody. But this situation, like I put my head down, like I didn't react. I'd been working stable jobs for two years. I'd been funding this whole thing out of pocket. It, they basically fired me because they didn't like me, um, which was and, and it happened during the holidays. And I talked with a um, business owner friend I'm with, too, and I was talking with him about it. And I was like, yeah, I mean. Um, it's working. I think, I think I, in terms of the positive balance, I do think it is in a place where it's going to positively balance out a little more now. I do think what happened, um, uh, is with the purpose, but, um, like I said, this is a piece, um, I don't know. It's wild. It's wild that something Goku, that's all right. Goku given birth. Um, I don't know. And that's what I'm saying. When I look at this myself, I knew it came from that place where I was at such an emotional height with the bipolar and schizophrenia and autism and um, being diagnosed with all these things kind of uh, um, and being open about it, which isn't very common in today's society. So um, I was at like an extreme place of pain with that. So I just came down and I knew because I was in that place of pain, I was able to emotionally transmute it and put this out. And that is what people relate to. That's the whole conversation. That's what people relate to. That's how it's able to get engagement. This was pretty much all emotional. Tra I don't think this is my most skilled, like the Flynn Patrick self-portrait at the time, Flynn Patrick. But that that's probably up there with that. But this one was just all like I was feeling wild. I was having trouble putting pieces together and um, um, under a lot of anxiety. I'd just gotten out of the mental hospital. Um we had guts in the Mewtwo dunk, um, perform really well in the reels. So we were moving into reels and I was trying to figure out another reel that, um, the followers would connect with. Um, I think it was like, go, I think the idea was someone else giving birth from the group chat and then Goku's a popular request. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, what is something that a, the followers will relate to and be something that's out there that hasn't been done before. And this is obviously something that's out there that hasn't been done before. So um, this all was emotional transmutation. I would say this was 90% emotional transmutation, 10% skill. I'm seeing some missed things right here. But the thing is, there was so much emotion that went into the marker coloring of this. Um, I don't even like this just came from my soul, basically. I just thought that wasn't, I just thought it, this is like a fish doctor who's helping Goku. But um, I did put some extra emphasis on the hair. I wanted to get the hair right. So I'm seeing that um, in terms of the color, there weren't that many spots I missed. But this was more emotional transmutation. I even left a white spot right here. And then um, up here, I decided to mix a couple colors. And I think it's just, again, the different contrast of the colors. I did link the red to his neck right here. So there's some angles going on. Um, yeah. Um, again, but, uh, the, um, I, it's up the, again, this has been shared like 14, 15,000 times, and this has only been four days. So, um, uh, I, um, but I, it's always an enjoyable experience, you know, more so it's about knowing when to draw. I do feel, um, yeah, it's definitely, um, this was definitely my top piece of February so far. And it was pretty much all emotional transmutation. Winner's a little bit rougher for me here um i i it, it, it just always has been um but i mean the good news is the summer is usually like really good and that's a lot of humans too um but um the thing is i continue drawing even if i'm like down that is and the reason for that isn't the followers the reason for that is because it's therapeutic because i drew 15 pieces in a mental hospital while not posting anything so um that's proof right there um and they thought i was crazy and they're doing it i literally walked like 15 miles a day just like pacing pondering the thoughts of what i was going to draw so the thing is even if people don't like it it's provoking a conversation yeah and that's my goal and it's happening it's been a transition that's the best way to put it um I probably did make a few mistakes, honestly, in terms of the transition. I could have done some things better. Um, um, I did use alcohol to deal with the stress, which probably wasn't the best idea. Um, but I do have a stronger support system in place. I keep to myself outside of the online thing. I believe strongly in the message of what is going on with it deep down. Um, any why can get you to, through any how. Um, 
it's been a pretty big howl right now that's for sure with all the um online comments but um I, I don't, I, I posted one of my values. I don't judge because I think it's a physical law of nature that if you do it, it comes back around to you. So um, I don't, um, I'll respond respectfully, but I don't judge. So I was sober for four months, um, completely. Right now um, I am on um, medications, like prescribed medications. So um, um, I'm, and I ha I start EMDR therapy next week, but I am excited about it. And part of the requirement for the therapy is that I do have to stay sober throughout it. So um, I do plan on doing that because I think this therapy um, could be potentially life changing in a positive direction. Yeah. I had some kind of intense experiences that um, definitely shaped who I am. Um, that is part of why I'm doing EMDR therapy instead of uh, talk therapy, because I think EMDR therapy is going to be more um, effective in healing these scars. I um, think the story of what happened with Joseph Smith is very intriguing. I'm not saying whether I agree or disagree. I'm just saying I think it's intriguing. Um, Specifically, that I can relate to something crazy like that happening and everyone thinking you're crazy. Yeah. I am not, I said this in my group chat too. I'm not saying anything that I, I, I did listen to the feedback that I got from my followers about the negative experiences that they had had. And um, I um, heard, I heard them. Um, my specific, there's two factors, but number one, I'm not, um, number one, I do agree and have a value of eternal progression, which is one of their top values. That did intrigue me. Number two, I do think Joseph Smith's story specifically is very intriguing. That being said, in terms of what has happened with the church over the last 200 years since his death, I would have to do more research before giving a more concrete answer. Sure. What, uh, what is, what is eternal progression? Um, essentially, and they actually, that's a good question. And the, um, missionaries did explain their view of this to me on my last visit with them. Um, so they essentially think that, um, there's not like a hell hell, but there's, it's kind of like a purgatory where there's room to grow. Um, and that there's, um, different, uh, there's different, Ways to grow. I'm gonna, I'm saying this in the most relatable way possible. There's different ways to grow in the afterlife where it's not just stagnant. That's also in Ray Dalio's book, which he talks about. You always either progress or regress, no matter what universe you're in, and that is um, a belief of theirs. Again, I have to do more research on the specifics of the church, and like I don't know what's happened the last 200 years within the church. I'm just saying specifically, I believe in eternal progression, and I do believe. Um, Joseph Smith's story, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it, it's definitely interesting. I think it's interesting. I'm not saying agree or disagree. I'm just saying because of my personal experience, I think it's very interesting. I am a Christian who believed Jesus Christ died for our sins. I don't believe the church is going about it the right way. My message, though, is not violence at all. So um, I want to be very clear on that. So um, I am just saying I disagree. That's all. Just with the systemic side. Of yes, I, di I, dis I disagree with um, how most churches in America are set up. Um, I'm not saying that out of anger. I'm saying that out of I think there's room to grow. What's going to do the most popular on my Instagram? No, thought anime. I hadn't done anime before. I knew that it was growing because of the Gen Z statistics. I knew that it was growing among Gen Z. And eventually, as we're coming up in a few years, Gen A, which we'll have to do um, statistical studies on. But um, I, so I um, looked up what the most popular animes were, and I just had a vibe fit with Light Yagami. Um, and it got uh, 31,000 likes.
on my first ever anime drawing. <laughs> so have have you since uh, yes. watched uh, Death Note? Yes, I have watched Death Note. Um, I like the story of Guts and um, on uh, Gr- Griffin Griffin or Gr- Griffith. I relate with I Guts there, more. Yeah, yeah. I, I relate. I do like the story of there's. I I think it's genius. I think the theory of it's genius. Um, what's crazy is I hadn't really read into the esoteric philosophy of it, but um, when we made Guts, how we did it. I read into how uh, the creator, um, uh, rest in peace to them, I believe they passed in 2021, the person that um, created Berserk, but um, the esoteric philosophy behind the two characters and behind the story. And it was basically a complete coincidence that we chose Guts for that religious piece. But then you look into the religious and esoteric philosophy of the anime and it's just, that's why, like, it's just wild. Like, it's just a crazy coincidence how, you know, the Holy Spirit told me to draw that for it. Based on that, I was like, oh, Guts. But I didn't think of the connection between Guts and Jesus. And that's when it got, like, I didn't think of that at all. But then we drew that. And then I looked at the philosophy of the of the manga. I was like, holy moly. In terms of the emotion, first of all, the purple pants, that's not something that would have been typical. Um, uh, I just felt purple was the right color for that in terms of the vibe fit. Um, I made his upper arms bigger, like, because Guts is pretty yoked so um <clears throat> i think that's another factor and then i did focus on the um like his veins like the arm veins um i did different colors for every um faction of um the piece um did put a lot of um focus into um one of my friends told me early on and one of my personal friends from college even if the eyes aren't like as de- like this one probably isn't as detailed but the emotion of the eyes is definitely what stood out to a lot of followers early on. I can definitely see the emotion of the eye here, both of the eyes because of how his eyes are. Um, and yeah, um, it's uh, it, 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 even this little smudge of green right here that was on accident, I feel like adds to it. And then on accident, you see red, but it's kind of like how Jesus was crucified and he had blood on his arm. So uh you know, I, 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 the, you know, I was strongly, this is a, um, the, the, this, this piece is a statement. Um, what that statement is, um, is up to, um, the viewer's interpretation. Rothko talked about Picasso and Picasso kind of had another direction, which is, a good direction. First of all, Picasso was a legend. Um, just in terms of um, his style compared to Rothko, and Rothko did himself talk about this openly in college lectures. But um, Picasso had, you know, more particular, uh, well-trained art school style, and that's an amazing style. Um, there can be a contrast. Um, I think again, if uh, any art piece that makes people talk is uh, an art piece that makes people talk. If you want to do something big for sure, like um, you gotta, um, you, I, I'd say the you gotta love what you do because the thing is, no matter what stage you're at and whatever creative pursuit you do, um, there are um, down times. Like the views can go down, the followers can go down, people might not be met. But that's where, if you really love what you do, you just keep pushing through it. And I think what people respect. Um, the close followers over time is um, people talk, but ultimately I um, have been consistent. Um, I've posted daily for over two years. I've drawn daily for over two years. If I don't draw a day, I make it up the next day. So um, I have taken days off. I just make it up the next day. But um, yeah, so I, I, I believe in the mission of this. I believe the purpose is very big, um, not just because of the follower number, but specifically the engagement and specifically how people are interacting with um, the art and how it's making society think. Um, I feel good with where I'm at. Um, I need to be careful with alcohol. Um, let me push this back here. Let me just get this paper. I like getting these a lot. Let me see if there's anything in here. You can see kind of the, this is a good one. That's um, Kanye. I drew that. Uh, that was January 2022. I'm trying to see if there's a paper in here because I was talking with y'all. Um, I didn't have time to go get a canvas right before this. Um, 
But these are a lot of drawings from over time. I don't even remember. I think that was a portrait of someone. I have a feeling about this one. Let's do this one. Cool. Um, as you can kind of see, there's a lot of emotion that goes into this. So what we talked about was we're going to do um, Tommy, Tommy Wiseau. Am I pronouncing that right? Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> Okay, cool. The room is um, definitely a um, modern movie masterpiece, and I'm not saying that unironically. Um, I do think it is. First thing I'm thinking of is the scene where, uh, what's the famous scene where, uh, don't leave, what, you, uh, yeah, there's a famous scene in there. You're tearing um, me apart. You're tearing me apart, that's it. Okay, Please thank you. Up. Thank yeah. you. Okay, that, that that's what I'm thinking. If we drew, you're tearing me apart. Cool. All right. I am feeling this. And you know what's funny is there is a tear right here. And there is actually a tear in the same spot in the same scene. So it kind of worked out. Cool. Um, I'm actually going to draw the other character too. So um, let's get started. I'm not... I am going to use this pencil to start. I think it goes with the rough edges of his hands. Um, that is perfect. So uh, one thing I think has improved over time is... Um, uh, features on body in terms of like the lines on the hands and um, yeah um, and uh, it's uh, definitely uh, improving as an artist is uh, something I always have fun with this is where you go with a little bit of the emotion you can see kind of the lines right here just kind of the rough edges of hey you're tearing me apart so um, yeah so um, I'm making sure to get the um, knuckles on his hands close to accurate or if not 100 percent accurate get as much emotion into it as possible so um i'm gonna do a little bit of a rough edge right here as well um next i'm gonna start his neckline which starts around where his um uh and he's got long hair so i'm actually gonna switch over to his uh the shape of his face which has been a big thing um i've worked to improve over time as well a um, little bit of a rough edge here, but as long as we get a very similar wavelength, we are good. There you go. Um, cool. All right, now I'm going to get his hair because his hair is a definitely a main feature. And then I'm just going to draw a little bit of the line on how it is on the inside. And then um, we're going to color it um, more of a sturdy black once we get more into... Um, once we get more into this. So, all right, I'm feeling good about this. I'm going to get the um, shape of his hair right. There you go. And then let's focus on the eyes because there's so much emotion into um, uh, this poor soul being torn apart. So uh, let's uh, draw the nose too. I, I, I feel like, especially with, um, you know, um, the controversy that the art can cause. If I get too caught up on um, making mistakes, I'm going to be extremely hard on myself and just beat myself down. Um, so I've just more of so taken a approach of letting go um, and embracing them. Um, what I'm doing um, to add a little bit of flavor to this, I'm drawing the outline of uh, Lisa. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, and this is also a little, this is a little bit to show the skill over time because this type of thing I couldn't have done two years ago, honestly. Um, so I'm focusing on the mouth. I didn't um, go to art school. I didn't go to, um, uh, wasn't professionally trained. Um, again, we had talked about before. I'd, um, part that it, in terms of improving the details over time, that is a reason why I have considered art school despite the negatives. Um, uh, that being said, I'm just kind of uh, rolling with it for now. And um, my kind of philosophy is to control what's within my control with this, which is improving and continuing to draw. There you go. That's looking good. All right. So you got that. Cool. Um, I'm actually going to see if I can start on the color to give this some flavor and to make it exciting right now for everyone in here too. There is a maroon... Um, sometimes it does take me a little bit to find the right color. I will give you fair warning. I think I found it right here and it's really small, but it looks like it's going to be the one that works. So 
You're going to see a little bit. Actually, there's a door under Lisa's neck, and it's silver. So I'm going to outline that. The rest, we're going to go crazy with this and uh, pretty much use the rest of it. I'm going to be careful. Usually, if I color, I try to do this with my hand so I don't color on the character. <laughs> And then I just do a little bit of emotional transmutation and just kind of like... This part can be a little intense sometimes, emotionally. Not today, it's been pretty chill, but like for that, what some of the pieces we talked about when we were reviewing. Some of those pieces, when I'm by myself, it definitely can be. This is definitely going to be... I, I do think, uh, again, I feel like the details on Lisa have shown the progression over time, but the background's definitely emotional transmutation. The vision happens and then the process reveals itself. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of, I'm liking how his hair mixes with it too though, cause it gives the background more flavor. And uh, with his sh shirt, like I'm focusing like this, I can go a little more hard compared to like, if, instead of getting it on his face. Sometimes if you do that can work though, like I said, um, and we're definitely at the part in the process now where if I make a mistake, I'm not starting over. And then I like how we're using this color because I didn't have a lot left and you saw, but um, we're getting everything out of it. And you're seeing the lines that the universe shows you. I'm going to fill in this side a little more though. So definitely pro in terms of progression, trying to um, fill more of the space, but you also see a lot of the emotional lines that are coming in as well. I feel good about that. Cool. All right. Um, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to do um, the blonde hair for Lisa. I feel like even though this might not be 1000% accurate, it's also going to put a lot of flavor into this. I do think this could do well as a post too. But again, whether it does well as a post or whether it doesn't, um, it's therapeutic for me and I got to do it anyways. I'm going to spend a couple extra minutes on this because I want to fill in the white spots on his shirt more. It, I think actually what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get this and I'm going to mix the colors. This is absolutely more accurate for sure. I am going to go a little harder with this because the it was like a grayish blue kind of. So I put light on the blue, but I'm going to go a little bit harder on the gray. I kind of just like let the emotion take over once. If I'm in a spot where like it's not going to get on the space, it's kind of like do that. One side of his hair is a lot more filled in than the other, so we're going to focus on filling this in. There you go. Yes, 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 yes. There you go. Perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. Yes, we hit that on the money. A little more shaded right here. Then that is perfect. That's home run. All right. Um, I am going to fill in his lips because of the motion of his mouth. I was debating for a second doing it orange to add a little pop. Um, I'm going to see if I, oh my God, I see the perfect color and it's on the ground right over there. I'm not going to go get it though. I'm going to see what's in here. Is it, there you go. Okay. Let's see. Okay. We've got the main parts. Now I'm deciding what else to do. Green. All right, so I'm going to add green right here. As long as I don't get it on her face from a... I'm going to be a little more careful right here so I don't get it on this part. 
Um, and in terms of that part, actually, because I'm looking at it, um, I'm going to fill this in a tiny bit more. Seeing a little bit of white. Fill it in right there, too, because I forgot about the part in between her earring. I'm liking the face, though. And again, if I color really hard, what I do, that's okay. What I do is um, kind of like do that. So I'm not ripping the paper. I'm going to do some, that's okay. I'm going to do some dot art right here. Gives it a little halo vibe. Pull this in a little more. Do it in circular fashion. Cool, it's done. You like it? Oh, dude, I love sandwiches and pizza. Sandwiches and pizza. Um, I love, um, I get meatball, because it's the cheapest thing at Subway, and I, but I put a lot of veggies on there. I put like ranch and jalapenos, and uh, I just load it up. And that's what I got, and it's really good. There's a few other ones. I like schnarfs, they are pricey though. It's like $20 a sandwich. Um, I like Deli Zone. Um, I like buffalo chicken sandwiches from Deli Zone. Um, and then um, pizza. Um, there's not a lot of pizza places in Boulder. I think there is a Jets Pizza j just opened. I'm interested in going there. Um, there's a really good place though, Fruschetta or Bruschetta. Um, it's near Pearl Street. They have really good pizza. And um, that's um, like, I believe that was the top one in Boulder for 2023. So I went and visited there once. I, that's a, I'm probably gonna go there again soon. Thank you.